Macro animations and interactions are one of the trend these days. In this video, we are going to see how we can create this call to action button with its macro interactions and animation 100% in the Figma. My name is Kia and here is the Kimo. Welcome to another episode of the Kimo Lab. Macro interactions are the system feedbacks in the form of simple and smooth animations that indicating the changes in our system or the transition between two different states of the same element or in general our user interface. In today's video we're gonna create a simple call to action button with its animation which is indicating the transition between two different states of the element. But before we go further in this process, if you are new in this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos as well. Now without further ado, Let's get started. The overall process of creating the component uh, which has a transition animation between different variants of it is so simple. We need to create a component and then we need to create different variants of it. Then we need to use the prototyping tool to connect the different state together and then use the specific setting later on for the prototype uh, which is defining the type of the animation or the behavior of the animation. That is the logic in general how you can create the uh, micro interactions or simple animation in the prototyping tools like a Figma. Here you can see the final result that we want to create it in the Figma. The first thing I will do is to divide the project or the process in three main steps. The first step will be creating the animation of the text which is actually rotating around the icon in the middle. The second step would be creating the interaction between the users and the heart icon in the middle of the call to action button. And in the last step we will combine all the elements that we created into one component and create the final call to action button. Using the text tool, I will write down the text that I want. Then I will make it a bit bigger and a bit bolder. Now it's time to use the Arc plugin to give our text an arc shape. We can adjust the shape of the text using the handle in the right side by bringing it up or down. I will go with this shape. And then I would click on the apply button and as you can see our text has been converted to the shape that we want. Now I make the frame in a square ratio and convert it to the component. Now I create different variant for every keyframe of animation that we want to have. Our loop animation has three different keyframes, the beginning of it, the mid keyframe and the last keyframe. The mid keyframe, I will rotate the text 180 degree, and for the last one, I will rotate the text just one or half degree less than the first one. Now it's time to go to the prototype panel and create our interaction. I will set the interaction type into the after delay, and the delay amount would be one millisecond. I will put the animation type in a linear and a smart animated, and the duration of animation would be 2000 milliseconds. I will do the same thing for the second variant, but the last variant I will connect it to the first one and I will choose the after delay one millisecond, but this time the duration I will keep it so short like one millisecond. In this way we will create our loop animation. Now let's see the preview. As you can see here, the animation is working pretty well. Now we have the animation of the text which is rotating around the call to action button. So it's time to create the icon itself and the behavior and the way that the user can interact with it. Now it's time to work on the uh, icons that we have in the middle of the call to action button. I will open the feeder icon uh, plugin and then select the heart icon. I will make its border a bit thicker and also change the color of the border to the red. I will convert this frame to the uh, component and then I will create four different variants for different phase of the user interaction. Hovering, clicking and again hovering. From the prototype properties panel, while I'm selecting the first one, and connecting it to the second frame. I will put the interaction type while hovering and then the type of the animation is smart animation and the type of the effect bouncy. In this way our animation would have bouncy effect. 
and then I will connect the last variant to the first one and I do the same setting for it. I want to create this effect that when user hovering on the icon, the icon become bigger. So I make the second variant a bit bigger. And when user click on it, the icon become red. So I fill the last variant with the red color. And also I change the first variant or initial state to the gray color. Now we can check the preview together. So I quickly add the icon component to my canvas from the asset list. Now our prototype is ready. As you can see, when you say hover on the icon, icon become bigger. And when you click on it, the icon become red. We have the icon, which user can interact with it, and it has a smooth animation. And we have the rotating text, which is completely working in a loop. So it's time to combine these two components together and create our final component. Now let's create the rest of the element in our call to action button. I create another frame and I add the animation that we prepared into the frame. I increase the border radius and also make the frame wide. I copy paste it in the canvas and make it smaller and make the color a bit gray. I add two more, uh, let's say, a circle shape uh, to my call to action button and make the border black. Now I'm making a component from all elements in the scene. Now let's check out how would be the preview of this element. I just add it to my scene by just dragging and dropping from the asset list. Now you can see our animation is working pretty good and the interaction is working as we expected. In the last step, I will add a bit shadow to the frame by just creating another uh, circle and adding a layer blur effect to it and make it black. And as you can see, now the element pop out from the screen. Now we are down. Our call to action button is ready. For the rest of the video, I will try to create a bit more complex layout and add my call to action button into the scene in order to see how it would look like in practice. Here you can see the final preview of our project and as you can see the call to action button is working pretty well. In the future we will try to use these kind of features in the Figma to create more complex components. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.